and welcome to Sports This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omogbe. Coming up on the program this morning, yes, we're starting with the National Sports Festival. The impasse between the federal government and the host state is finally over. And of course, everyone is happy that the games will continue. We're thinking what's going to happen. Will the athletes have to go home? By the end of the day, they were able to resolve them. Of course, the games continues today. Also on the program, yes, it's all about, well, Delta States. <laughs> At the moment, Delta State is having some kind of social distancing, so to speak. 32 gold medals, 12 more medals ahead of their closest rival, which is Bayelsa. I'm talking about the gold that they've won uh, so far in the National Sport Festival. In total, they have 72, and their closest rival have 43. That's Bayelsa, Edu, 63. So for Team Delta, they're really determined to hold on to that first position they had in Abuja 2018. And of course, we'll talk about the Europa League. Manchester United was a big win for them away from home because Marcus Rashford scored his 20th goal of the season and Bruno Fernandes a late penalty and Manchester United an advantage over Granada in the first leg of the Europa League tie quarterfinals. But we're not starting with that, of course, because uh, Yemi will be in Lagos to talk more about other sports across the globe. But let me start with the National Sports Festival. Of course, that's the big one right here in Benin City. Of course, it's day nine, and you know what's happening today. It's all about track and field. It's starting today. Everyone has been waiting for it. Gymnastics also will be starting today. There's so many events to look forward to today, but there will be starting with what happened yesterday, the fact that the issues have been resolved. So many people were thinking, what's going to happen? Are we just going to have the sports festival for a few days and then it's suspended simply because of money? It wasn't going to happen because I know the federal government will do the right thing. And of course, they did that. So the games continues. I'm, I will not be talking alone in the studio. I have Favor Ito Awazubi IFM. He's right here with me. Favor, good morning. It's good to have you. Yeah, good morning, Cecilia. Good to have you here. Yeah, the last thing we were together was like, uh, that's uh, uh, in um, <laughs> that? that was January first, twenty twenty. Yeah, you can remember that. That's one great. Year. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's been one year and one three year months. and um, three months. Three yeah. months, yeah, that happens. Yeah. But then you are right here in Benin City covering the National Sports Festival. Let me quickly start with what happened yesterday. You know, at okay. first, I mean, everyone was actually scared. And even when I talked with some of the athletes, they were like, "Okay, I'm just hearing it from you. Are we going to go home?" You know, they were all confused. But somehow they were able to resolve that. What was going through your mind when the whole issue was going away? You thinking of packing your bags and going back to the You know, uh, somehow I was optimistic that yeah. the festival would not be cancelled. I mean, of course, I had three thoughts in my mind. First thought I had was uh, the Edo State government looking at, oh, we have started, we've started the festival. Mm -hmm. The promise made by the federal government is yet to be, is yet to come. So. If we don't do this now, we might not even get the money after the festival. So I think the Edo State government tried to box the federal government. Also, for the federal government angle, they promised to help uh, the Edo State government. So it's only necessary that they get the funds to the uh, Edo State government. So a lot of things are happening, and um, people have tried to bring out so many uh, propagandas out of this. But I think at the end of the day, it's still based on trust issues. You know, the Edo State government wants to be sure that uh, the federal government, you know, do the needful and help them. Don't forget, it's just like a case of FIFA and um, a World Cup host. Yeah. For instance, we have, uh, those, uh, we have uh, Nigeria who hosted the Under-17 World Cup in 2009. FIFA will come and assist at some point. So imagine if FIFA did not help the NFF, yeah. you know, at some point, it will be very, very bad. Of course, uh, those, and also don't forget, um, for the past one year, COVID-19 yeah. has affected so many states, not just uh, those states. The election was just about some months ago yeah. for Edo State, the rerun. It's spent money. So a lot of things, you know, happened, and it's only, it's not out of place for Edo State to say, hey, we need the money, we need the money now. And a lot of persons have said, I mean, they should be able to host, but it's not easy to host. Yeah. I mean, we can see that the facilities have been maintained even after how many months it was ready for the festival. Series of postponements, series of council meetings by directors of sports across Nigeria, and yet we didn't have the festival until now. So, I mean, they just had to, and even for, you could even hear from the words of, from the mouth of some athletes or some officials complaining about lack of funds and something. So it's only necessary that they come to the rescue of um, the um, LOC that's talking about the host at those state governments. And we can see now that things are going well. Even the medal stable, you know, is now yeah. coming out with ease. <laughs> the MOC are now doing a lot. And don't forget the LOC chairman, the deputy governor of Edo State, uh, Honorable Philip Schreiber, who is also the vice chairman of the MOC, yeah. uh, has been doing a lot. And when, uh, he, when he said the festival will be closed, shut, shut down, 
I just knew, okay, at the end of the day, there'll be an, a resolve between the two parties. And we could see that yesterday in the morning, yeah. it was at the kickboxing um, arena yeah. to watch kickboxing. So we are happy that the festival is ongoing and um, it's our Olympics. So we can't have this. It would be a shame if yeah. we uh, cancel the sports festival. Yeah, it would have been a shame if that happened. Let's listen to Nebuliza Anako, Permanent Secretary from the Ministry of Sports, talking about how they were able to resolve the issue. The Honorable Minister met with His Excellency, the hard-working governor of Edo State, on this news that we had and fully briefed him on the developments. The presidency also called and spoke with His Excellency, the governor, to confirm that the process of getting this financial assistance done is at the final stages. However, I want to put on record that the ministry is here to receive a letter of conveyance uh, from, uh, uh, from the necessary quarters on what the federal government is willing to uh, offer the state government. And I believe shortly we'll get that. And once we get that, we'll convey to the state government. As the accounting officer of the ministry, if there was any fund released by the federal government for, uh, for assistance to a state government, I should know. So far, none has been released. But uh, with today's development and assurance from the presidency, uh, you know, is, 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 you, you can take it to the bank that there will be assistance to the state government. Okay, take it to the bank. There will be assistance, but how much is it? We don't know how much they're going to give the host state, but the good news is there will be some form of assistance. And after that, I had to speak with the LOC to see if really they've agreed with that. And of course, Felix Schreiber, you know, talked about the fact that yes, they're happy with the intervention from the presidency. That really helped them, you know, to want to continue the games. And in the meantime, the Edo State government will have to give the LOC money to continue with the games, depending on when the federal government will release their own funds. Yeah, so I want to thank Mr. Governor uh, for uh, coming to our aid. Uh, uh, the Chief of Staff to the President and uh, the Vice President and the Minister of Finance had a discussion with Mr. Governor and uh, the issues were amicably resolved and a greater commitment has been made by the federal government. And as a result of that, uh, Mr. Governor has asked that whatever we need to deal with the issues, especially the issue of vendors, the accommodations and the caterers, that uh, we'll deal with them immediately. So I want to use the opportunity to also thank the president, the vice president, the chief of staff, and the minister of finance for coming to our aid as a state and for coming to the aid of the Nigerian youth, not to truncate the, the, the excitement that we are already having in this game. So uh, the MOC secretary is already functioning. It's been, it was temporarily shut down, it's open. And thank God that no game village or event uh, areas were shut down before the presidency and the governor resolved the issues. So we are happy to announce that uh, everything will go as planned and let's enjoy the game and enjoy the hospitality of Edo. Okay. I mean, they were not shut down before they had to intervene. That's a good one. Uh, we're happy that the games uh, continue, you know. <laughs> so it's a good one for everyone. We're all happy because, I mean, I was thinking, pack my bags and go back. I mean, how, after how many days and all, we came in on Monday. I'm like, okay, I'm still very, really, really fell down in the hour of time. I mean, you look at that? the festival cancelled midway because of funds. Oh, it's embarrassing. I mean, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just the same like the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, yeah. you know, for the COVID-19. They also experienced COVID-19. Of course. And um, they would also want some form of assistance of from course. the International Olympic Committee. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are some things that we, we tend to see. It's I mean, the National Sports Festival is in the budget of the federal ministry. Is the budget is there. So 
I mean, it's not should not be difficult getting funds or getting something. I know the country itself, um, you know, we've gone through a lot as regards COVID-19, but somehow, somehow, this is some is something very important. So it they is. should be able to assist the uh, Edo State government. I hear people say, "Hey, Edo State government came out to say they will host the festival," but then you also ask yourself that for facilities, yes, they provided. Uh, feeding, what about the, uh, the little assistance? If it's just 30% or 20% of it, it will go a long way to even ease the burden they face so far. So uh, it's only normal that the federal government do it. I hope that the money come, and I hope we we'll also know that the money has arrived. So we can also go back and say, okay, yes, Edo State Government has, re has received the money uh, promised by the federal government. And we hope it comes before the end of the festival. That's also one thing, because <laughs> at the end, after the festival, because uh, from okay. the body language and all that, they may, okay, let me not jinx this. Let me get the money to the end of the festival. <laughs> but hopefully they can get that. And I'm happy that Governor, uh, Gordon Obaseke has promised that he will, you know, whatever thing the LOC needs to do right now, he will be helping out in that regard. And of course, the festival and the ceremony, everything will continue. Let's leave the politics outside uh, and talk about what's on the field. Track and field is starting today, and we know that Cardinal athletes are some of those athletes that have been thinking of what they can do to really compete among the best. And we know when it comes to the National Sports Festival, the poaching of athletes is allowed. If your state is not treating you well, you go to another state and you feel you can make some money. And of course, get better treatment, get better training, just get a better understanding of what your sport is all about, better coaching and all that. And these Cardinal athletes are really raring to go, thinking of how they can really win medals in the 100 meters. I mean, when you 100 meters, okay, it's a strong feed. You know what, before I ask you, let's, let's listen to you know, these athletes, you know, talking about what they intend to, you know, you know do in terms of competing with the, some of the elite athletes that are coming from Delta State and some other states. Okay, so basically I've been trained for it, like the training for the 100 meters. When I went for the trials, I actually placed second in the 100 meters and it was good for me. So Cardinal picked me amongst the people who would do the 100 meters and then the relays also. So it's actually an opportunity for me and also because of my training, I improved. There was a time that it was postponed and then I wasn't feeling too well. But they said the as National Sports Fair was going to hold, I think maybe three weeks back or then. So I wasn't feeling too well. And then when I heard it was postponed, it gave me time to recover from my illness and then push forward, improve in my training. And then, yeah, I think the postponement for me was okay for me. Yeah, I actually worked hard for it. I actually worked hard doing it. I'm coming here to make myself proud and also my coach. So I will not look at other athletes because them, they came for a particular reason. So me, I'm coming here to also win and also improve my personal best. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Timmy, talk about there, you know, talking about how she can compete. And also the fact that the postponement actually helped her. Why some people were complaining, we know that some athletes, I mean, for uh, Hajara, she said she was actually injured at the time. But then, with the postponement, it actually helped her to train more and be fit and be ready for the sport festival. Same with Timmy, talk about, and when you're having this kind of postponement and it's an advantage to some athletes and to other athletes, it's a disadvantage. But then for these athletes, it's actually well an opportunity for them to see if they can get the medal. But we know how tough the 100 meters can be. Very, very tough. Uh, we've had it, uh, a series of athletes like the likes of Joy Odogera in the past. Uh, not forgetting also, uh, A.C. Brume also attempts 100 meters. She has a very good sprint. She's, she's going to run 100 meters. Run 100 meters. <laughs> and then not forgetting uh, Orupe, Sherisha also is very good. That's for the men. For the men. So, <laughs> and then our uh, foreign athletes who are currently not around, Divine Oduduru, uh, you know, Shaya Ogunlewe, these are guys who are also good in that particular re uh, in the region. And Blessing Okabari, who is also not going to be available for the National Sports Festival. So it's an opportunity for them. And, you know, surprises are loud. Mm -hmm. And these uh, local athletes want to try to beat the foreign athletes. I remember in the finals of the 400 meters at the last National Sports Festival in Abuja, we had a uh, 400 meter surprise. Yeah, in Mabonguko, it, yeah. She won against uh, uh, Yinka Jai, who was mm -hmm. also in that particular race. Patience, Patience Okon George. So these are uh, the opportunities for these young athletes to shine. And some of them have had opportunities because of the COVID-19 break. They've been able to attend more games, try to better their time so that they can qualify for the Olympics. Um, just some weeks ago in Yaba in Lagos, we had yeah. a series of events where, you know, went down. And it's a big one for them, especially for Team Delta, who are looking at this area, at this um, sport, athletics, as their area of strength. I mean, just of recent, Mike competed for, Del for Delta State last time, won a gold in high jump. We'll be competing for River State. So... People are waiting to see what happens this time around. And for someone like Divine Oduru, who I hear was around 
around in February. February. Yeah, most of the athletes I were mean, around in February. They were that ready the to festival, go. Yeah. And some of them will be biting their fingers. Now, why didn't the festival <laughs> hold in February? So, but, but that's that's the beauty of it. Everybody wants to come back home to compete for he, uh, her, her state or whatever state they want to compete for. Well, it's going to be interesting. And I... I, I see surprises coming up, uh, you know, the 100 meter dash. It's going to be very, very competitive. Joy Udo Gabriel, um, um, a lot of persons will, yeah. will come around that do. And, and, and the fact that I heard that Essay Brumet might just do the 100 meters is another thing. I mean, I know how good she can be for when long it comes jump. to Yeah, for long, long jump. jump. And then do the 100 meters dash. Well, Team Delta, there are good medals will just be rising. This <laughs> <laughs> is looking like right now. So let's leave that and quickly talk about kickboxing. Yes, you mentioned that, you know, the uh, LOC chairman had to watch the kickboxing, you know, live and all that. And, of course, there were a whole lot of drama in that. But the big thing is, was the fact that when you have, you know, Team Delta dominating everything. I mean, Team Edo thought they won, the joy, the celebration and everything and all that. The, the, the kind of, how do I put it? The, 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 there was this festive mood inside the hall, you know, yesterday and all that. But at the end of the day, it was a Team Delta. I mean, the guy who, how many people will even remember his name, Uche Jim, you know, Uche Jim Oyeka is someone who has not really, it, when it comes to uh, kickboxing, you know, in Nigeria, it's not a name you really reckon with because it's just upcoming, so to speak. I mean, the guy he defeated, so I don't even say Rahon, I mean, he has been to several international competitions and all that, to all African games, he has been champion in the minor 67 KG low key for like 10 years and all that. And then when this upset happened, people were wondering what really happened. And of course, he didn't really accept the defeat at the end of the day. You know, sometimes these athletes, when they are a champion in their weight class, they yeah. tend to have this uh, overconfidence attitude. They tend to feel like there's nobody that will defeat them. Uh, complacency again for them. So I think these young athletes also have it in their mind too. If this guy is a champion, for me to be the champion, I have to be the champion. For, for instance, you look at the aspects of judo for Ekwe Kota, who also, before now, um, she started from the youth category, a young champ growing in the sport, and now in the weight class, she's the champion. So coming into this festival, having qualified for the Olympics, people thought, or people were saying, if you've qualified for the Olympics, you are a threat to me. I'm going to push you down. I'm going to push you down. And, you know, what will be going through our mind will be different things. Well, how will I hold on to this? Because it's not, it's not even about going attaining success. It's maintaining the level mm -hmm. of success. So most of these athletes, when they, get, when, they hit their, uh, when they hit success, they tend to feel like they've arrived. And, you know, one, don't want them to put that much effort they did while going straight to uh, the, that to the top, of course, for athletes. So uh, I think that's what played out for the guy in kickboxing. And then you look at the combat sports. People are coming up daily. Yeah. People are trying to, for wrestling, for instance, we're having new champs coming up. Khadijat uh, mm -hmm. just qualified for the Olympics, her first attempt, 19 years of age. Just some years ago, she was 16. Mm -hmm. And now she's qualified for the Olympics in her first attempt. You look at other persons who are also doing a lot in combat sports and other parts of sports. They want to just ensure that their name is written in gold. So I think that's uh, one thing that's made uh, has ensured that, you know, kickboxing gets surprising. And upset is allowed. I yeah, mean, for you to come as a foreign athlete, you should be scared. That, I mean, some people don't even want to attend because they feel their record <laughs> to be broken. So I'm not surprised. Uh, that uh, that particular um, sport had an upset, and we will definitely see more because. <laughs> <laughs> like, you didn't expect that to happen at all. I never, well, never expected it. <laughs> never expected it. Well, let's get reactions. We thought they were going to hug, but he didn't. He was so upset and just left immediately. He was trying to smile and all that, but that was actually a fake smile. So let's listen to Uche Jim, you know, talking, you know, about the victory over someone he was looking up to when he started kickboxing. He came with bro and passed his father. That was, that, that was uh, what you guys just saw now. God, he was my father, he, he's my father in the game, but I've come now to overthrow him in the weight category. Me winning the gold medal in the, in the minor 67 lucky category, that does not mean that I will just go home and sit back and relax. No, I have to work out to continue uh, with my training so that I can be able to defend it when, I, when next we meet. I'm hoping for the next Olympic. The, uh, my dream is not to, to end here. I'm heading higher. Of a throat, this is not even a close fight, neither is a tiny or a speed decision. It, I know the fight, it was a total animal decision for the three corner judges given to me. I am the professional kickboxer. I know 
the, 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 the point where there is a score. I am not just a competing for the, for, for, for the state. I am a two times all African gate champion. For a 10 years now, I'm be rolling that weight without not even defeat. I want the fight as I know. You can even see the reaction from the audience, from 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 the for the viewers. And you you with, with that, I believe you can convince that this really it was a, a cheating or it was a mistake on their on their side. I have protest. I believe the mistake we 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 will be visit. They will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will change the, 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 the score. Uh, welcome back from the break. Favor it's why it's still right here in the studio. Oh, quickly, we just, um, and here we go now. Let's just look at the medal table, what it's looking like, right? Yeah, what's the medal table looking like right now? Team Delta, of course, 32 gold medals in all. They are on 72. Yes, that is huge. And with what Delta State started with, they said, okay, they're coming here to ensure, because they held on to that trophy at the opening ceremony. So the way they were holding on to it, and team, this is not going to leave us. And that's what they're trying to do here. 32, 25, and 15. Yeah, Baeza, closely, not really so close when it comes to gold medal, because the difference is like 12. 12. Yeah, social distance, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> then Edo, you have 18. So Edo still have a whole lot to do if they can surpass what Delta is doing. Yes, they are close to Bayesa, but to Delta, there's a whole lot of gap. For Rivers, yes, they are closely following mm -hmm. behind. And Imo State, Imo I'm surprised State. that they are there. I was expecting Lagos to be there. But then I think basketball, football events, yeah, those team sports are still there. That's where Lagos will flex their muscle more. You know, when it gets to that. But if you're looking at the top five right now, what it's looking like at this state that are ruling it? Yeah, for Delta State, uh, they've been able to know their strength, which is swimming. I, I, I tell people, you look at uh, a particular sport, for instance, weight li uh, weightlifting has, uh, you can win about three medals, clean mm -hmm. and jerk uh, in weightlifting. Come to swimming, you can win about eight gold medals, mm -hmm. over eight gold medals. That's where U.S., Michael Phelps, who used to swim for U.S., got yeah. his medals. I was at the swimming event two days ago, and out of the available six gold medals, Team Delta won oh, five, five, and Bayelsa won one. One person from one Delta. Person from, from De from, uh, <laughs> but so imagine, imagine the, uh, the available medals. And for Bayelsa, they've also been able to rake in medals from swimming. I mean, this lady, Ife Ezegbe, yeah. she's a fantastic swimmer. Mm -hmm. she, so far, she has won four gold medals for Team Bayelsa. She won, so, she won about eight silvers in the last national sports festival. Aside that, she's also a champion in Nuga. She represented the University of Portaco. She's been swimming for long, and that's where Bayasa also have rated in medals. For Team Imo State, they've been able to get their medals from Taekwondo. Scrabble is also another place they've gotten their medals. I mean, when you look at the teams or states that you want to tip to win or come out top five, you may not want to mention Imo State. I think they've been able to go back and look at where they have comparative advantage. They've looked at their strengths, and they've really worked on their strengths. And that's talking about the combat sport for Team Imo. And for River State, surprisingly, it should be swimming, but they've gotten their medals from combat sports yeah. and one from Scrabble. I mean, you want to, I, I remember asking uh, the Honorable Commissioner for Sports, River State, uh, he said, of course, swimming, they know a lot of things that has happened so far in swimming, but then they're also doing well in, in Oju, and also optimistic that, he's also optimistic that many things will come out for them. But River State last time were second, half behind them, Delta State, and now look at where they are. So it's yeah. really, really, uh, you know, but we'll wait to see what happens. Uh, still more sports swimming also continues today. So you can expect Team Delta yeah. and, and um, Bayelsa to increase that. And Bayelsa also has wrestling. Wrestling is mm -hmm. a real strength. It starts tomorrow. Starts tomorrow. So you okay. may also want to expect more votes for them. All right. So Edo State, you have to think of what to do to see if you can host to win. But from all indication, I don't think so. All right. A favor, thank you so much thank for joining me. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. <laughs> all right. Uh, another guest will be joining me. To wrap up the show, Eku and Kanta, she will be joining me, Duko, uh, Judoka, uh, for the last segment before we go back to Lagos. I feel honored, I feel so excited, I feel blessed among the men because as it stands in the commission, I'm the only female and the first female commissioner in the sports commission. So I feel blessed at that level. And then for my team, I think we have done our best, you know, to make sure we motivate them and they come out with the expected results. Um, from the look of things, though it's not easy in every game there must be a, a winner, 
They must be a loser. But I'm not saying we are losers, so God forbid, we are not part of losers. Losing doesn't flow in our veins. So our athletes are actually trying, but just that we've not gotten a gold medal. But I'm certain that before the end of this whole thing, we'll show records gold medals. For this trip, I would say we have actually done our best. We have motivated them, and uh, none of them will complain. If any of them complain, then maybe it's their coach. But from us, we have all done all we needed to do, and they are happy with everything. Back from that break, you listen to the Commission of Sports for Cross River State talking about how they want to win more medals. Right now, they're on five, one silver and four bronze medals. So he hopes that today when the swimming continues, they should be able to win more medals. And Gladys, and she was really excited that well, welfare is top notch for Cross River State, and we're happy about that. Enku Ekuta, she's right here in Benin studio. The last time I have her, she was at the Lagos studio. She was preparing to qualify for the Olympics. Now she's at the National Sport Festival. She had to, how do I put it now? You know, uh, climb up in the weight class, and she won gold medal in that one so and she's already qualified for the olympics and she's right here representing of course our own state aqua ibom she did not you know leave her state at all i love that about you welcome to the program thank you for having me <laughs> okay it's been a while last night you know you were with me was like uh, last year right yes, mm -hmm. yes yeah yes, we yes. just got back from madagascar madagascar you yes. know after winning good medals and all that and then you were like okay you just need some more competitions to qualify for the olympics and all that so how has it been for you since that time it has been good thankfully and thank god i qualified for the olympics so i've been training towards the olympics and another african championship okay interesting now when you came to benin to like compete in you know, judoka you know everyone of course i mean favor mentioned it everyone wanted to like beat you i mean so yes she's she wants to go to the olympics and all that yeah. but this is someone that we know we can actually um, beat a little bit were you really under pressure at that time no i wasn't but it's normal for all athletes to be tense mm -hmm. before your competition, but I was tense. I'm like, okay, I can do this if I calm down and do it. I'm like, and I heard people saying, oh, okay, she has qualified for the Olympics. Let me be tired. I'm like, okay, no, that's not going to happen. So I was focused and my bouts were easy for me. Yeah, interesting. What was it like moving up the weight class? I mean, you did 50, minus 57, 57 in, in, in Abuja, Abuja, and yes. this time around 63? 63, yes. So what was it like? It was okay because... Yeah. People went, when I came, some people that wanted to fight 63, when they saw I was in 63, they went up okay. and others went down. Okay. So I was, there were not many in the class, so it was okay for me. Yeah, there weren't many in the yeah, class. So what was the training like? Was it the same? Do you have to maybe eat special food or what are, food? What are the things you did differently in your other weight class? It was harder this time because I was writing exams in school okay. and going back to... I trained in a choir, but my school in Port Harcourt. So the days I don't have exams or when there's spaces in my exams, I go back home to train. And the day I have exams, I come back to school, I write my exams and go. It was difficult. But yeah, it, was okay, it must yes. have been hard. How did, how did you cope? I mean, what are the extra things that, you know, gave you that energy to be able to just combine both? And the results, we've seen it, a good medal. My dad came to school the days I'm having exams. If I have exams Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, my dad will be in school. If I finish my exams, I train in the evening, I train in the morning. So my dad gave me the motivation also. I love that. I mean, more parents should have to do that. I mean, yes. just support your kids, yes, right? Yes, That's yes. That's really great and brilliant because the kind of sport you do, I mean, judoka, it's not a sport that most kids want to go into because of how technical it can be. I mean, your body structure and everything and all that. He wasn't worried about that. He allowed you to just do that. Yes. Support from mom? Or yeah. she's a bit skeptical? Mom, no, no, no. My mom is an Olympian in judo. Okay, yeah. Yes, you told so, me that yeah. I remember. So, so she, she encourages me yeah, very well. So yeah, now, I let's, I mean, done with the sports festival. Yes, when are you leaving? You, you're done with all the, your events, right? Yeah, I'm done with my done events. With events. Yes. So I know preparations for Olympics start. So what are the tournaments you want to go for? My sponsor, Akuga, yeah. they are preparing me for African Championship okay. in May, okay. Casablanca. Okay. From that, we have Grand Slam in Russia, a world, a world Championship in Hungary, then the Olympics. So after Casablanca, I go for a training tour in England. Mm -hmm. I stay there till the Olympics. Hmm, you're so lucky. Uh, yes, yeah, I am. Happy, right? So it's always <laughs> good for most athletes to have sponsors. That really help, you know, in terms of preparations and all that. So you're not worried about the money, resources, coaching, mm -hmm. vitamins and all that. You're just like, cool, right? You just have to train, 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 train. Just yeah, that's focus it, yeah. And of course, your studies, remember? Yes. Okay, that's studies, key. Yeah. And um, we're going into the second semester, so I think... 
It will be okay for me. Yeah, very okay for you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Eko, for joining me again. Thank you for having me. All the best at the Olympics. Right? Thank you. <laughs> because I may not see you since you're going on the training tour so from May <laughs> to yeah. the Olympics. To the Olympics, July. Uh, all the best. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for watching from Benin City. Of course, that's wrap up the National Sports Festival right here in Benin City. Over to you, Yemi Adebayo. We still have a lot when it comes to the world of sports, especially Europa League and some of the stuff that's coming up this weekend in terms of the English Premier League. All right, thanks, Cecilia. It's nice hearing uh, from you. Hopefully, we get to do this again some other time. All right, that's my colleague Cecilia Morigwe from the Benin studio, and she's told you about everything going down at the National Sports Festival right there in Benin City. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Uh, let's just uh, bring you straight into everything uh, because um, a lot is going down in your fast-paced, money-spinning world of sports. Talk to us this morning. You can tweet at us at channels underscore sports. Let us know how you feel. We'd like to feel your pause. like to know what you're thinking about this lovely Friday morning as we take you through uh, this cruise uh, on a sports journey. All right. Uh, let me read a tweet that I've gotten from uh, Jogoski. At Jogoski says, uh, 28th National Sports Festival, but the boxing ring doesn't appear to be up to standard and there's a potential risk for the kickboxers. Why is this so? Unfortunately, I'm not an expert. I, I won't be able to answer that, but of course, I will get the experts too. It looks good on TV. Uh, that's all I could say, but the experts will, will let us know. All right, let's just uh, dive straight into all of it. My colleague Austin Okun Ackman is also uh, in <laughs> with me. Uh, we're going to have um, a good conversation regarding the other things uh, that's happening in the world of sports. Greetings to you, Austin. Thanks for joining us on the show this morning. What's a great to see. I mean, good to be on the program. All right, I think it's only fair to allow you uh, talk about um, the National Sports Festival, even though it appears Cecilia and Favor has exhausted most of the things that we might love to talk about. But, but let's talk about the prospects, the challenges, the benefits of the sports festival. Uh, awesome, Yemi. I'm super excited that the National Sports Festival is beginning to gather some momentum after that threat. Finally, uh, everything seemed to be okay. Uh, let's just hope that it ends that way. I think that's the major challenge that this competition has suffered. Uh, we know funding is a major, major setback to sports development in Nigeria. So when Edo State uh, made that cry for help, I was really hoping that the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development uh, will, you know, come to their rescue. But um, They've put out a press release that they are going to support, and let's just hope that they support because it's good uh, to see the National Sports Festival, you know, tarry till the end. Benefits. We're already talking about Enkwe Kuta. She's qualified for the Olympics, and we've seen a lot of prospects coming up from the National Sports Festival uh, already dreaming of qualifying for the Olympics. For me, the National Sports Festival reminds Nigeria as a country that we are bigger than just being tagged a football country. With the National Sports Festival, you can see that we play hockey. We are good with Taekwondo. We have judo cards. We have people that play chess, scrabble, cricket. Yesterday, fantastic show of T20 cricket when Edo, Edo have been fantastic, impressive in the T20 and they lost to Kaduna. Guess what? The national on the 19th cricket captain, Isaac Okwe, is the captain of Team Kaduna and is already gathering this sort of experience to play major cricket. I love it so much because this is, a, this is another opportunity for administrators to look at ways that they can develop sports from the state sports council. There's too much attention on football, and that's why we're not developing. Let us look at this National Sports Festival and, be, and make a statement, have a will, drive policies that will make sure that Nigeria is seen as a sporting country. Cycling has been ongoing. States are winning different medals, even in cricket. You see Quara even winning medals in cricket. It tells you that this country is too blessed. So I'm super excited that we have the National Sports Festival running. Yes. Mr. Sunday Dari and his team should sit down with Federation presidents and say to themselves, after this sports festival, what's next? 
All right. What are the All right. pictures we want to leave in the minds of people to say sure. that, yes, we didn't just do the games because we wanted to just do it. Oh, because COVID-19 came and we cried. And then those states say, okay, we'll help. We'll still host it. After that, what next? That's what they should be planning, hear me? All right. You made it sound so easy, and it's going to make me ask you, so why haven't we become a multi-sport nation? I mean, and, and, and in your opening, that's what you said. All of these things, I, I hope the uh, key stakeholders are listening, because the, what, what the National Sports Festival is showing us is if we put our minds to it, we can get all of these things done. But my fear, uh, and you have alluded to that already, my fear is we had the sports festival, everybody goes to sleep, two months to the next sports festival, we start again. That's the, that's the problem, Yemi. And yes, we are indeed a multi-sports country, but everybody wants to run to football. Obvious reasons. They believe there's money in it, or people want to go to basketball or athletics because it is popular. Let me let our viewers know that cricket has been played in Nigeria since the late 19th century since the late 19th century. In the federal government colleges back in the day, cricket was everything. You see the old boys from different schools coming around to watch cricket. We made it die. We must bring it back. Yemi, let's also let our viewers know that before independence, Nigeria had produced world champions in boxing, Hogan Kebasi and Dikie Tu Tiger. In boxing, we were a force to reckon with. Should we go into athletics and tell you the names that this country, Nigeria, has produced? What did we do? Back in the day, we were also respected in Africa. At the Himo, Himo Grasshopper team uh, in handball, they were doing so well. What did we do with that? We were also respected in Taekwondo, in combat sport. Chika Chiku Meriji went to Beijing, won bronze. Did we sustain that momentum? So, so this is the time for us to reflect a major problem. We put the wrong persons to administer sports in Nigeria. It has to stop. Look at why wrestling is doing well. They have a Daniel Igali who is passionate. Look at why badminton is doing well. They have a Frank Obi who is doing well. Look at how squash is pushing because they have uh, the, um, uh, Mr. Yerin, they will know so much about squash. They are trying their bit to make sure that they push the sport. Bring it to cricket. Professor Adam Okwenya, he brings cricket. He's the chairman of the Cardona State Cricket Association before he became the president. Take it to volleyball. You need the right persons. Engineer Musa Nimrod has been an advocate for volleyball forever. When you have this sort of minds together, Please, listen to them. Change. Don't tell them what to do. Don't bring politics into it. And let us invest in the right persons right. and resources. And maybe... We might just get back our glory days. All right, all right, all right. So we just had to start that way. We need to go on a break right about now. When we return, we'll dive straight into the Europa League and, of course, matches in the English Premier League. All right, welcome back. It's time to take a look at uh, the Europa League, what happened last night. And, of course, I'll get Austin's thoughts uh, about the things that happened. Let's take a look at uh, the results uh, of four matches played in the quarterfinal stage. Uh, first leg, quarterfinal, only the game involving Arsenal uh, didn't result into an, uh, in an away win. Uh, it almost happened, but it didn't. Ajax Amsterdam lost to AS Roma, two goals to one. Arsenal just when they thought they had it in the bag, uh, conceded a goal in the dying moments of the game. Very shameful way to throw a game away. Dinamo Zagreb lost to Villarreal, an own goal, um, gave Villarreal that win. And Manchester United, very comfortable 2-0 win uh, over Granada of Spain. Let's quickly listen to the Manchester United manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, talk about the victory then we'll also get the thoughts of Austin. Checked, Luke, but I think and hope you should be okay for, uh, for the weekend. And Marcus, fantastic goal. Uh, great pass by Victor, great run. Uh, and uh, the, the skill to take the, bring the ball down like this. We've seen it uh, a few times before, and um, uh, that's uh, a top, top quality goal. It was an... Um, Important goal, of course, the, the, the second one there, because uh, one nil lead, losing three players is uh, is not a 
good position to be in. Um, I don't think we deserve those uh, five yellow cards or how many we got, four or five. Uh, but that's uh, that's happened. I'm delighted with the with the result, of course. Uh, the Manchester United manager saying he's happy with uh, the victory. Uh, Austin, let me get your thoughts. Uh, special emphasis on the Manchester United game. Granada had a lot of the possession, but United still found a way to get the victory. All in contrast, Arsenal had a lot of chances, got that goal, but still bottled it. Yeah, a fantastic result for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his team now. They can't even start believing that they can go on to win uh, the Europa League. I like the way they executed that one. Marcus Rashford with the first goal in the 31st minute. And of course, the one who doesn't miss from the sport, Bruno uh, Fernandes, you know, wrapped things up in, in stoppage time for Manchester United. Tells you that they went into that game with a result, result oriented mindset. It's an away game. You do so well, you give yourself less pressure when you come back to Old Trafford uh, for the second leg. And I think with that, um, you won't blame anyone that can easily take Mr. United to advance. Different story for us now. And it's so, so, I wonder why the players or the coaching crew don't even think about the fans. You don't come out of an abysmal performance against Liverpool in the, in the English Premier League, and have a Slavia Prague that you're supposed to use to tell your fans, sorry, take this point, and then you play the way you did. You know, the Gunners yesterday, they were, they were shambolic. You can't miss those sort of chances in a very important, important match in the Europa League. The Europa League seems to be Arsenal's only realistic chance to qualify for next season's UEFA Champions League. Because I tell you, the Gunners are 10th on the EPL table. They are 10 points off the top four spot. So they would have just said to themselves, this Europa League is our heaven and earth. Let's do everything we can to make sure that we are fine with this Europa League. Now they've put pressure on themselves. They've made it so difficult. And I think this is the first time in some years that Arsenal has failed to win against a Czech Republic side in, in European competition. So they are getting all of the bad starts. Mikel, um, Mikel Ateta is confident that they can, you know, go to uh, Prague and get the results. Yes, even if they go get it, you don't need to put yourself under such pressure. Up next for them is Sheffield United. Sheffield United is one team that can stun anybody the day they decide to play football. And if you start having all of those results... It affects your next game, you know. So I, I really don't know what the problem is with us now. I was speaking to some Arsenal fans last night, and they were saying it seems they they don't the players don't look at the position Arsenal is sitting on the league table. with a slap to reality that this is the Gunners. This is not where you should be. And then you need to start getting results to give you good press. It's quite disappointing. I don't know how they're going to get out of this one because uh, if you look at that stoppage time um, equalizer from, from uh, Slava Prague, it will motivate them yeah, in the next leg. And Arsenal needs to be very, very careful. Okay. Uh, otherwise, it will go from bad to, to worse. worse. All right. Uh, before I let you go, Austin, let's quickly talk about the English Premier League. That's your... And uh, let's look look at the fixtures. Uh, a lot of people are already talking about Spurs and United. Maybe that will be your party shot. But let's take a look at the fixtures. Fulham uh, will take on Wolverhampton Wanderers, Manchester City. will take on Leeds, Liverpool. Take on Aston Villa, Crystal Palace. Take on Chelsea. Uh, Burnley will take on Newcastle. West Ham will take on Leicester City. Tottenham will be up against Manchester United. Pick of the pack for a lot of people. The Sheffield uh, United will be up against Arsenal. All right. Austin, in a minute or less, uh, talk to us, uh, especially about the United game, you, you, United sports game, and any other game that catches your fancy. Not sure it does, you know, uh, particularly uh, that you have the charismatic Jose Mourinho, you know, as a sports manager, always, you know, comes a lot of vibes before and after the, uh, the game. Uh, for Manchester United, 
what other momentum do they need to get into a, such a crucial match uh, than the victory they got against Granada in the Europa League? They are second on the log with 60 points. I'm not saying they can catch Manchester City. I'm sure they know that too. But they need to do everything to fend off the likes of Leicester City and West Ham that are breathing down their cheeks. So um, they're going to approach that one with everything that they've got. But... Um, the English Premier League has been funny this season, you hear me? Um, if, if you look at Spurs and the way they've been playing, uh, started the year so woeful, and then now uh, they're trying to, you know, get back to it. Um, Gareth Bale and the likes are beginning to, you know, show that they want to, you know, play football. Uh, but this is Manchester United also. It's a, it's a team that you cannot right. say that it will go this way uh, for okay. them. So uh, let's see. Uh, football will give us the answer. So Spurs playing at home. Uh, I'm sure Manchester United will not give them any respect. But I want to see what Liverpool can right. do. Uh, because Liverpool owe their fans a grand finish to mm -hmm. the season. Yeah. Uh, they have an excuse uh, to, to be playing the way that, that they've played. So right. let's see, uh, particularly uh, with what happened with Real Madrid, if they can actually you know, back. get back to winning ways All right. uh, in the English Premier League when they take on Aston Villa. Okay, all right. That's a good place to leave it. Thank you very much, Austin. Uh, we'll get to do this again Thank some other time. Well, always a delight here, me. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're on the own stretch. I've left at a minute. I'm trying to see <laughs> what I can do. Uh, we have NBA results. Uh, we need to take that. Then we'll take a look at the papers quickly. Let's take the NBA results. I'll run through the NBA results for you. Chicago Bulls, uh, of course, defeated uh, the Toronto Raptors, 132 to 113 points. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers, without Anthony Davis, without LeBron James, lost to the Miami Heat, inspired by Jimmy Butler. Cleveland Cavaliers defeated OKC, that's Oklahoma City Thunder. Milwaukee Bucks lost to the Dallas Mavericks, 101 to 106 without Yanis Antetokounmpo. Uh, Portland Trail Blazers lost to the Utah Jazz, 122 to 103. Phoenix Suns, their winning streak snapped by uh, the Los Angeles Clippers, 113 to 103. Then the Detroit Pistons defeated the Sacramento Kings. That's it. That's the result on your screen. Let's take a, a look at the papers, we're not going to be able to read, but let me just tell you that we have complete sports. We have the Sporting Sun and we have the Sporting Life. Uh, that's it. Uh, quickly flashed on your screen. A lot of uh, important stories, but let me just take one. Umar Sadiq linked with 60 million pounds, 60 million euros move to Bayern. And uh, that's Sporting Sun too, right there on your screen, leading with the year and your story and sporting life, also leading with the story on the year and your year and your goal, winning uh, the goal of the mock. Yeah, so that's the much we can take uh, on the show this morning. We do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've brought to you. We'll back again next week. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now.